peace this is Brian life and I'm gonna to try to make this quick 10 to 20 minute video on making a drop shadow in substance painter but the drop shadow is on the mask so you're generating a drop shadow or an outer glow based off of a mask and you do this with an anchor point and also a generator that was created by somebody uh, Jacko Sari and sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but it's on Gumroad, uh, Jacko, if you look up Drop Shadow Generator, works with substance masks, works with masks and substance painter. But if you look up Drop Shadow Generator, I'll put the link, Jacko, J-A-A-K-K-O, Sari, S-A-A-R-I. So basically... This is different because uh, Substance Painter does have a drop shadow filter, but it only does drop shadows on like text or images or things, not masks. So this does, this generator will actually be derived from your mask. So he wrote, uh, you know, Substance Painter does have a drop shadow filter, but sadly that does not work with masks. So I created a drop shadow generator that works with masks. Sorry about my... Uh, my fan making a bit of noise. So I created a generator that works with Substance Painter masks. The easiest way to implement this is to use an anchor point for the mask that you want to reference. So the mask is essentially the shape that you're going to have an outer glow or a drop shadow or an inner shadow. You can inverse it. You could do a lot of cool things. So you could have shadows inside the shape or outside of the shape. Okay, um, the ad, you basically, uh, so you create the anchor point on the mask layer and then add a fill layer on top of that and reference that anchor point. And with that fill layer, you have to add the generator. He doesn't really explain it well here. I had to try it and figure it out myself. And he doesn't have a YouTube video. That's why I'm doing this now for anyone else who wants to know this. I've had to re like analyze his description. I've had to look at the images to figure it out. When I looked at this image is when I actually kind of got it. Like I understood by looking at his layer setup. And I realized that he had the mask. So this is the mask layer. He had an anchor and then on top of that he had a fill layer with drop shadow generator but he doesn't say add the generator to the fill layer it probably should be obvious but to me it wasn't so here we are okay uh, so this is kind of what you get right now I'm painting on the mask this is not a height this is not height this is not beveled out by height this is actually just a mat like a drop shadow that's coming from layers on top of them. So let me just shut off some layers. So I have a, I have this paint. It's just like a, a, you know, fake paint, right? And then I have a layer that has brass. So it's all metals. Let me see here. All right. So it's just, it's a smart layer. Uh, it's a smart s substance. What is it? Oh my god, I can't even believe I... Smart material. <laughs> it's a smart material that's metal, right? And then I painted a mask. So this is the mask. Oh, it seems to actually have paint on. So you want to... So you have your metal, and then you need to add a black mask, right? And then after you add the mask, you should add a paint layer. Because it's always best, in my opinion, to paint your masks um, on a paint layer. So you don't ru ruin and you don't sort of, uh, so it's, you could delete it. And this main mask is non-destructive. Like it's, it's just, it's fine. It has nothing permanently painted on it, right? So here I am making some chips, you know, chipping away. There's no height map. There's nothing going on. There's no fake height uh, it's just what I want to try to make it look like is if this blue paint is sitting on top of the metal. Okay, so after you you paint your masks, 
Oops, I actually just did the wrong thing. I just did what I said not to do. <laughs> I painted straight onto the black mask. So it's actually not going to work like that. So let me see. Uh, I don't want to delete it, but I'm just going to clean it up. Okay. So let's try this again. So we have the paint layer and there's some chipped out paint effects going on. Okay. So once you have that paint set up and you know what you want, you're going to right click and you add anchor point. That's what I did right here. This is the anchor point. I'm going to name it, you know, brass chip bevel, right? So you just name your anchor point. And then you create the layer on top that you want as the shadow or an outer glow, whatever you want. Okay. So you create a layer, a fill layer, you click fill layer. Then you have to add a black mask to the fill layer. Once you add the black mask to the fill layer, then I'm just going to do it right here. Let me get rid of that. So basically, why not just get rid of this? So this is what I did. So you add a layer and we're going to consider this a shadow because we don't want it to be a glow. I'll show you how to do a glow later. But so right now it's revealed. We want to add a black mask. So it's actually hidden and then you right click. Well, first of all, you have to download or you have to pay for this $3 amazing generator it's really cool it's only three bucks thirteen dollars for a small business three dollars shout to jacko sorry once you download that um sbs file or sbsar file you have to import it into substance painter you can click on the plus symbol and then you import it and it's a generator Okay, so now going back to the layer, saying that you already did that, you have this fill layer, you right click, and then you add generator. Then you go to properties, and then you click on generator, and then you find it. I have drop, I started to type it in, drop. Drop shadow, boom. Nothing's happening. Why is that? Because we have to find the anchor point. We have to direct the input to an anchor point. So you go down to input, anchor points, and then you find the chip bevel or whatever you want to name it. You see how it highlights? Chip bevel. Now we got it, but it looks odd. It's kind of weird, right? For one, his default setup, for some reason, the opacity is way down. The other thing is the distance is off, right? So the shadow is kind of like it's a little bit weird so I put it to zero just to kind of like see where I'm at then you you bring it down the size of it down and the spread you could like go up right keep alpha should be on and that's pretty much it now you have like an outer shadow derivative from your shape layer I'm sorry your mask layer down below so we have this mask layer here, and this is where this is coming from. So that's pretty cool. So you could do an outer glow if you wanted to add this, like a bright, say, color. Like, I don't know. I want to make this, like, glowing, like, you know, for some reason. You know, you can make it glow. You see what I mean? So you could do, like make your shadows have an outer glow but uh so basically like this is how i made this shadow now the cool thing is you could do a few of them so i did a another one with the light color but this time the reason why it looks it's not outer glow because i clicked on the generator and if you go into levels you can click inverse so right here it's it's outer glowing but if I click inverse it's going to like well actually right now it's still outer it's glow 
but it, it's given the illusion that it's on top of the blue paint. It, it's a little tough to explain. But the other thing is I set the distance so it's shifted off. So that's also why it's looking like a, sh a highlight instead of a outer glow. It's not evenly distributed because if it was at zero, then it would be a, literally an outer glow, right? But since like like that, obviously that's an outer glow, you know what I mean? But if you go to distance and you click like 0 0.002, it's going to shift it to the side. And this is now going to give the the uh, light and shadow effect where if, if there's light, there's going to be on the opposite side a shadow. And then hence, this is where the shadow is at. So it also has to do with the angle, right? So if the highlight that I created is uh, is right up here at like 120, then the shadow layer, I just basically duplicated the layer. Um, and I'm going to show you why I made this paint layer after. But so the shadow layer would be the opposite side, right? Because we wouldn't want the shadow on the light side. We want it on the opposite so that sort of gives the illusion that this blue paint is beveled and sitting on top of the metal. And then for the last part, I did an inside shadow that's basically sitting on top of the metal. So it looks like, uh, sorry, I actually have to inverse that and turn it way down. So you see how I'm kind of like trying to, and I'm also trying to follow the opposite side of the light. So if the light is hitting here, we want all the drop shadows to go the opposite side. And sorry, I'm just trying to find my bearings here. Uh, yeah, oh, and the distance. So I didn't really have the distance up. So 0 0.002. And then again, I have to make sure the angle is working with the light so it makes sense. And then I turn down the opacity. So there, it's giving kind of a shadowed look. It's giving the impression that the paint is sort of sitting on top of this metal. See what I'm saying? So this without the shadow. And this is with the shadow. And you can mess with the... There is a little bit of ambient light going on in here. You could mess with the uh, levels to try to get that correct. To try to like get rid of that extra bit of light. But that's basically it. That's how you would make this. Now, if you could see up here, there is a problem, unfortunately... Um, this generator does look at the UVs, so it sees the UVs and it creates shadows where there are UVs. So that's why I add a paint layer so I can paint out the effect. You see, so you do have to go in and you got to kind of edit and paint out some of the drop shadow effect that gets on parts that you don't want it to be on, like in here down in here started to come through because my UVs are right there and I believe it also happens with yeah I mean I don't see it happening there much uh, maybe somewhere out here it's working but yeah so that's pretty much it and uh, the link will be here and again you could just gotta go to Gumroad uh, Jacko, uh, C R W J A A K K O dot gumroad dot com. So it's just Jacko Sari, and that's it. I'm gonna copy this link now. I'm gonna post this YouTube video. I found it really helpful. I think it's an amazing uh, generator. It's really very subtle. You could get some really cool effects without using height. Because I feel like height just doesn't really always look realistic. Um, sometimes it does. It just depends. And like you don't have to have these inner shadows and inner lights. You could just have a little drop shadow. It's up to you. All right.
hope that helps. This is Brian Life, like and Brian Life, L I F E, L I K E. If you do like this, like it and subscribe. Peace.